Alright, hello everyone and welcome to AEW Discussion. I'm your host and AEW Enthusiast, Dougie Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to be discussing Dynamite on January 18th, 2023 episode. And this episode of Dynamite, well, if you thought the show at the Kia Forum was a packed card, this episode from Fresno, California was also a packed card. I think two of the biggest matches on this card were Brian Danielson versus Bandito and Darby Allen versus Kushida. Um, and, you know, overall, I would say it was a solid show. Um, and, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into the action of the show. Start off with an AEW All Atlantic Championship match Orange Cassidy versus Jay Lethal. Um, and this was a good, entertaining match with some effort with that, uh, you know, both of these guys put some effort into this. As expected, uh, Lethal and Cassidy have competed against each other before, and their chemistry with one another remains strong. So, this is a good feud for Lethal's faction rather than the feud that. Um, is he had with Allen and Darby Allen and Sting, and I think it shows. Uh, fans are more likely to accept Jared and company in this spot, and they have worked well with the best friends to this point. Who knows if this feud continues on um, after this match? Um, but there certainly are worse options for all involved, and most likely, <laughs> the man there's probably another match down the line what that match is i have no idea but uh they're probably this probably ain't over between them and the interesting thing about the all-atlantic championship is <laughs> recently i mean i mean i know orange cassidy has defended it against certain competitors from uh different countries but it seems like predominantly the all-atlantic championship is being defended against uh guys from america which now, not necessarily an issue, but if this is supposed to be like a championship representing the Atlantic, you would think there'd be a bit more, you know, guys from other countries kind of stepping in and everything else. I will admit, the Atlantic title was certainly an interesting concept. Probably an unnecessary title to create. Um, I don't know if this is a title that really has a long shelf life, but for the moment it works. And it's a nice little championship for Orange Cassidy, but I would not be surprised if this thing ends up kind of running, ends up having a you know, ends up being retired at some point. Granted, you know, Tony Khan has never seemed interested in retiring titles, but, you know, again, I do have to question the shelf life of this title. Uh, moving on from that, Young Bucks versus Top Flight. And Top Flight's been on a red hot streak re recently thanks to their win in a trio's gauntlet, um, Battle Royal over the holidays, a series of matches with the Black Oak Combat Club, and uh, this match with the Young Bucks, which they won, which will certainly can help continue their momentous role. The story of the Bucks still feel the fact of the ladder match from last week well portrayed, and it certainly does make sense given that that ladder match was last week. I've never competed in a ladder match, so I can't really pretend to say how long it takes to recover from that, but I do gotta give them credit for competing the week after that ladder match um, <coughs> as well. Interesting to see Kenny Omega not uh, present, not that there's a story there, but it's just kind of interesting that the trio is champion and, you know, there's only two-thirds of them. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if this, uh, if there's a story that comes out of this, you know, if Tough Flight uh, reunites with A.R. Fox and they go after the trio's title, it'll be an interesting uh, little feud right there. And then Brian Danielson versus Bandito, so fans in Fresno are you know, 100% into this match, and also seemingly more behind Bandito than Danielson, which I think is proof of the connection that Bandito has made with the audience in AEW. Um, you know, you watch him in the ring, and you see a match of very athleticism and strength. He's got a unique look and an even more unique in-ring style, style, and I think that's, you know, a big reason why crowds are all for it. Um, and then when you have him in the ring delivering bangers, uh, like this match uh, with Danielson, and that just proves that he can hit, you know, and you know, and he proved that he can hang with probably the best wrestler in AEW. So that will certainly help um, him and his connection with the audience going forward. Uh, the Danielson versus MJF or Danielson MJF program has been solid so far, and MJF kind of issued an interesting little threat to uh, unleash a un the unmasked monster version of himself um, on his potential top contender. Nice little tease of escalation. Hopefully something comes of it um, to kind of help push the feud forward. Uh, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see again. You know, so far, back-to-back -back bangers from Danielson, but I think that's what we can expect from Brian Danielson. Um, that, that's right, he places Brian Cage next week. That will certainly be an interesting match. Um, I go to just you know, the size advantage and everything else. You know, Danielson works well with practically everybody, so 
I think we can expect another banger next week. Um, yeah, that's not a that's not an unfair standard. And then the show concludes with a TNT Championship match: Darby Allen versus Kushida. And it was interesting to see this position as the main event when Danielson versus Bandito was also on the show. But give credit to Tony Khan for continuing to shine a light on uh, um, on Allen, as he Allen has been somebody that Khan's been adamant about pushing as a breakout star from the beginning. Now, the thing about Darby Allen is that his in-ring style is, well, it's car crash style, and, you know, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but, you know, there's no denying that he is over the audience, and he's been a rare consistency from day one with the company. This was uh, another good match on a night full of them, or a night, um, you know, full of good matches, so nice little way to close out the show. Right guy won over, um, and Khan and company continue to rebuild the credibility of a TNT title that, well, kind of took a hit with uh, some of the title changes of the last year. Not saying they weren't bad champions, but it was more just like guys winning the title and then bad booking would accompany those, um, yeah, bad booking would accompany those title reigns, you think about Warlow, you think about Samoa Joe, um, you know, Samoa Joe really never got a chance to get going with his reign and Warlow, you know, him winning the TNT title was supposed to be this big payoff, but didn't quite feel like a big payoff, and it just kind of, that title reign kind of plotted along. Now the title's back on Allen, and I know that, um, uh, John Huber was, you know, the best, you know, was a great TNT champion, short-lived as, um, but... I think we also gotta give some credit to Allen too, and I think certainly, no disrespect to John Huber, but I think Darby Allen as TNT champion the first time around was probably about the most interesting, was probably about like one of the best TNT title runs. It was when the ti- it, it brought the most attention and interest to the title, and now seeing it back with Allen, I think he has a chance to kind of pick up. Uh, you know, kind of reunite that interest in a TNT title and, you know, put it on a match, uh, put it on a good match with Kishida certainly helps with that. Also nice to see, uh, Kishida back in America competing on television too, you know, I, I, I enjoyed watching him in NXT and I enjoyed being able to watch him again. And, uh, yeah, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap up this episode of AEW Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.